Hi! In this video, we're going to introduce one of the more useful consequences of the cauchy gorsaw theorem, this uh, principle of deformation of contours. The principle will be useful when we approach problems like this. Let's suppose that we need to find the value of the integral of 1 over z along the contour c, where c could be either this uh, unit circle with radius 1 centered at the origin, or this square with side length 2 also centered at the origin. Now, the uh, integral along the circle, that's an integral that we saw worked out in the last video. There we parameterized the function and the curve. Um, we saw that the answer turned out to be 2 pi i. We wonder whether there's a connection between this value and the value of the integral along the square. Now, let's keep in mind that by the cauchy gorsaw theorem, if we had a different function we were integrating along, a function that was analytic everywhere inside the circle and on the circle, and inside the square and on the square, then these two integrals would have the same value. They'd both be zero. Now, the function we have, 1 over z, is not analytic everywhere. It's uh, not analytic at zero, for instance. But we wonder, is there something we can say about the relationship between these two integrals? Well, here's the principle. The principle of deformation of contours says, suppose you have two curves, c1 and c2. They're both simple closed contours, and let's say that C2 is located inside of C1. Let's say that F is analytic on both the curves and at each point between the two curves. That is, every point inside of C1 but outside of C2. Now, if the function is analytic um, in all of those places, then it turns out that the integral of F along the contour C1 is exactly the same as the integral of F along the contour C2. So if I take these two particular paths through the complex plane, the values of their integral will be the same. Well now, going back to my original problem, let's see if we can apply that here to our unit circle centered at the origin and our square with side length 2 centered at the origin as well. Now I can't apply these directly, taking the circle to be uh, C2 and the square to be C1, because uh, the circle doesn't com exactly lie in the interior of the square. Here at the top and at the side of the circle, we will actually run into the, the square if we were to superimpose the two shapes. Still, we're going to be able to say that the value of the integrals along these two curves are the same by using maybe a, a third shape. Let's suppose that actually C1 could be the outer circle, and C2 is this inner circle with radius 1 half. Now, since the function 1 over z is analytic everywhere between the two curves and everywhere on the two curves themselves, the deformation of contours principle says that the integral along c1 will equal the integral along c2, which means the integral along this red circle will be 2 pi i because that's what it was along the big circle. But now remember that that little red circle is also contained in the interior of uh, the square. Now we just got done saying the integral along that little red circle was 2 pi i. So then using the principle of deformation of contours again, that means that the outer contour, the square, will produce uh, an equal value for the integral. The integral along that outer contour will also be 2 pi i. So that's uh, one way we can answer the question. We can, in effect, think of taking any, any shape we want and replace it by another shape, as long as the region sort of differing here, the corners of the square here, uh, as long as the differing region is a place where the function is analytic. All right, so now this is the principle. Let's talk about why this is true. Let's suppose that you had two curves, C1 and C2, as described in the theorem. And let's suppose that you were to imagine drawing a bridge joining one part and one point on C1 to one point on C2. Now, if I want to, I can define a new curve C that's going to trace around C1 until it gets to this bridge. We're going to cross the bridge to C2. Then we're going to trace around C2. But this time I'm going to walk around C2 in the opposite orientation as I had before. Then I'm going to cross the bridge again, and I'll be back to where I started. Now, the point of defining this red curve C is so that the region inside of it is a simply connected region. You'll notice here that if we were to uh, imagine these as walls and we trace along the walls, 
when we get to this bridge, if we think of that as a wall and we cross over, we get a, a region inside um, the red walls that is simply connected. I can't really draw a curve that, and enclose any hole without hitting and passing through the wall, which isn't allowed. So by the cauchy gorsoff theorem, what this says then is that since the function is analytic at every place inside and on this red curve, the integral along that curve should be zero. Now the integral along that curve can be broken up into the integral along C1 plus the integral of the function along this bridge plus the integral along C2 but with the opposite orientation and therefore we'll, uh, we'll minus the integral along C2 and then we'll be uh, integrating along that bridge again but this time we're, in, we're getting an opposite orientation from what we saw before and so the, uh, the value of the integral along that portion of the journey will be the exact opposite of the value of the integral along the, uh, the first version. Well, when we simplify, uh, we'll have the, uh, the values of the integral along the bridges canceling out. We'll have zero is equal to the integral along C1 minus the integral along C2. And so we'll end up with this statement, our conclusion to the principle of deformation of contours, that the integral along C1 is exactly equal to the integral along C2. All right, well, let's see an example of how you might use this. Let's suppose that I want to find the integral of the function one over z plus i, where I'm uh, traveling along the square with the vertices at minus two, uh, plus two i, plus two minus two i, and, and so on. These, uh, the four uh, vertices you, you see listed there. Now the function one over z plus i is not analytic at minus i, and therefore I can't just use the cauchy gorsoff theorem here. Now I could parameterize the four sides here and compute the integral as I have in the past, but let's try and do something a little bit more clever. I know by the principle of deformation of contours that the value along this square is equal to the value along a circle with radius one centered at minus i. And I know that finding integrals of this type are very simple once I parameterize them. So what I'm gonna do is parameterize that circle with radius one centered at minus i and here's the parameterization that will do that for me. And then I'm going to use the principle of deformation of contours. The integral along C can be replaced by the integral along C prime, where C prime is that red circle. And then when I make the substitution of my parameterization, I put that in for Z, and I put Z prime of T dt in for dz, I get a very simple integral, the e to the i t cancels out, and I'm just integrating that i along the interval from zero to two pi and I arrive at, once again, the value of two pi i. All right, well that's an application of the uh, principle of deformation of contours. Uh, in the next video, we're going to take a look at um, a, a special fact that you may have suspected based on the previous two videos. See you there.